Thank you all for coming. It means a lot to our family. I'd like to begin by reading Psalm 112, which exemplifies Dad's life. Praise the Lord. How blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Light arises in the darkness for the upright. He is gracious and compassionate and righteous. It is well with the man who is gracious and lends. He will maintain his cause in judgment, for he will never be shaken. The righteous will be remembered forever. He will not fear evil tidings. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. He has given freely to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn will be exalted in honor. I always wanted to be more like Dad. He was blessed with boundless energy, curiosity, and compassion. His love for life and others overflowed in everything he did. His devotion to my mother and us as children inspired me. Dad did not tell you how to act. You just caught his vision. I envied his single-minded determination and discipline. Most of his waking hours were spent, of course, studying the Bible in God's presence. He seemed irresistibly drawn to the word. Some personal um, vignettes about our lives. I remember his intense quizzing of any new acquaintance about whatever was his area of expertise, a symptom of his voracious desire for knowledge about almost anything from farming to genetics, of course, barring any interest in sports and entertainment. <laughs> they were irrelevant distractions to life. <laughs> as talented as Dad was, he was not a jack of all trades. Dad had significant directional and mechanical challenges. I'll never forget the day I walked into the kitchen to find him with a screwdriver in his hand, dejected, staring at a fan my mother wanted him to fix. He had no idea where to put the screwdriver. <laughs> Books and the Bible were his friends, not tools. Another memorable time was during a furlough in Chattanooga. Dad asked my husband, Paul, who had never lived in Chattanooga, to drive us to a friend's house because he didn't know the way. Dad's mind was never on where he was going. During our visit, Dad began to pontificate about how it bothered him when people can't spell. He looked rather judgmentally at Paul. I sort of messed up when I didn't marry a super speller. Paul looked back at Dad and retorted, you know what bothers me? When people get lost after having driven somewhere a hundred times. <laughs> Paul, however, still didn't have the last word. Dad looked triumphantly at my mother, pointed his finger at her, and said, why, son, that's the reason I married Joan. One of the things I admired most about Dad, and if there's repetition here, forgive me, I'm the last and we don't know what we were saying, <laughs> the other one, was his ability to be undistracted by things of this world and oblivious to status. He didn't work at it, it was a gift. He needed only the company of his dear wife, his paper and pencil, his Greek Bible, and a simple place to lay his head. He was always content with just enough. He never accepted royalties for his books or the Keyword Study Bible. In leadership, Dad met his share of challenges and obstacles. He was strong, but never harsh. His passionate opinions were always aimed at bettering others and always couched in gentleness. Most of you do not know just how riveting a speaker Dad was in his 30s and 40s. I still remember our typical family vacations as a geeky teenager trying to be cool, but yet being dragged along to another Bible conference in Pennsylvania. Even after hearing the same message for the 20th time, 
I was still moved by the words, despite myself. His example was what compelled me to follow the Lord. As a person other than Jesus Christ himself, I looked up more to my father than anyone else. I wanted to be a good Christian because dad exemplified a good Christian. I wanted to be more like him. The sermon I continue to think of since dad's death is from Luke 16, the parable of the shrewd steward, difficult parable. The heart of the message was that our lives should be focused on using our earthly resources to prepare a welcoming committee in heaven. The first thing I came, that came to my mind when I heard about dad's death was what a wonderful welcoming committee he had in heaven. Dad was many things to many people. Above all things to me, he was just my very special daddy. I loved him dearly. I'll miss him greatly.